what do you consider your greatest failure, i.e. learning experience, or, and juxtaposed by your greatest accomplishment? Well, they're kind of two sides of the same story. I mean, I don't know if this is quite your question, um, but I did a book with the rapper 50 Cent, right? Called The 50th Law is my fourth book. And um, so the, 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 the story combines both sides. So, um, was this a publicist's idea or your idea? Like, well, I it was kind of um, a publicist put us together, his agent put us together, and then uh, I don't like working with other people as you as you all know now, and I don't like co-writing either. Well, and it's but, such a departure from. I mean, it's like oil and vinegar. It's well, like, there's no there's no power in it, but um, I really liked him. I thought he was really interesting. He wasn't what he, I thought he would be like, and I wasn't what he thought I'd be like. And I thought, there could be an interesting book here, bringing this kid from Southside Queens who's a crack dealer, and this middle-aged Jewish boy from Los Angeles whose father was a chemical salesman, who would ever think of putting those two things together? Yes. Something will happen. Okay, so I'm starting to write the book. I'm a little bit intimidated, because I want to please 50. I want this, and so I'm focusing a lot about him. I'm interviewing him and I'm writing about his business and about his life. And in the process, I was kind of losing who I was, you know, and, and my voice and what would make the book really interesting. It's supposed to be a combination. And then the publisher, Simon & Schuster, they had some of the, the chapters together. They basically um, said, you know, they cut loose the deal. They said, it's off. We're kind of firing you in essence. Mm. The contract, we're voiding the contract. They didn't like the content? They didn't like, they didn't like the content and they thought it was taking too long. Both of those oh, things. Okay. Both of those things. And that was really painful because up to then I had three books that were very successful. I had never really known failure on that professional level. It was very painful to me. What are you talking about? I'm Robert Greene. I write books. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And then my agent got me in touch with somebody else who was a very smart guy, Bob Miller. He was with Harper back in those days. And he's, he led the manuscript and he said, Robert, the problem here is that there's too much, there's not enough of you in it, mm -hmm. right? You need to bring more of yourself into this book. And it was painful to hear, but he was right. Mm -hmm. I listened to him because he's, an, he's a very established publisher. Mm -hmm. And so I go, okay, I'm gonna, and then he said, all right, well, I'm gonna get you a new deal with Harper. That's the good news. The bad news is you only have eight months to write it. And that's like, I can't write a book in eight months. Never been able to do that, okay? But I had no choice. It was like, get rich or die trying. Mm -hmm. You know, I either succeed or this is another, this will be a failure that may hurt me, really hurt me in the long run. And so I got into it with incredible energy and I poured myself into the book, a little less 50, a bit more of me. And because I only had eight months, I was writing with like this urgency that I never had before. I pulled it off, wrote the book, and it's been very, very successful since then. Sold hundreds of thousands of copies. 50 loved it. So um, that was kind of like a seed of failure. I wasn't being myself. And then true success, I returned to being myself. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up. Reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from. And